Hey, gum people. Well, shit, I'll sit down here, do a crazy crop story. I don't think I've done this one. Not really that crazy, but uh, I got this burn pot going. I gotta keep them. It'd be like, don't turn your back on the ocean. I'll be here talking. Meanwhile, my whole pasture will catch on fire. I'll turn around and go, oh, shit. So hopefully it won't spread my backs to it. But uh, so when I was working in Auto Theft Task Force, one of my undercover cars was a little Ranger, Ford Ranger truck. And, uh, you know, it had hidden lights and five flights of plates, so nobody knew it was a cop car. So the problem with that is, and because I was, I was an FTO, a field training officer, when other agencies in the county, uh, uh, for a field training officer for police, when you get hired, you have to go through a six months to a year, however long they want to do it. There's probation period, then there's an FTO period. Your FTO period is kind of to expose you. When's picking up? Hopefully my fire won't get out of control. So the FTO, the field training officer, is supposed to be one of the more seasoned officers that kind of helps you, he's been around for a while, he's been through the FTO school, he, he's got a little bit more common sense than the rest of the guys, and the department has kind of said, this guy kind of knows what he's doing, so we want him to be training other people. So as a field training officer for auto theft, what the other agencies would do is they have their little book, and in every book you have to go through there and go, Okay, did this guy take a burglary? So when you're driving around, you have an FTO and there's a burglary in the city. Even though it's not in your beat, the FTO can preempt the officer that was dispatched and say, we'll take that, my trainee needs training on that. So then we go handle a burglary. And then if he does it pretty good, he missed a few things, I write in his book, I say the things that he missed, things he should do, then we'll do another one, then when he does it good, I'll sign him off on burglary. Okay, he signed off on burglary. So you go through all the major common crimes. Uh, you have to go through the rape and through a burglary and through assault and a simple assault and domestic violence and so you're working your way through all well one of the sections is vehicle threat so the person has to be uh, signed off on auto theft well since since I worked on auto theft task force and each county or each city in my county paid in to my salary to be on that task force it was my job to give back to those cities that were paying in. So I would do periodic training. Uh, we would bring the team in and work their city, like on high auto theft nights, when they have car shows, when they have the circus in town. When they, anytime there's something where the crime stats show that crime goes up, we would go in there. So all the agencies would have me sign people off on FDO for auto theft. And of course, you know, for a new cop, warming up out here that sun's coming out it was nice this morning I started this about 738 uh, so I would sign them off so what the FTO would do is say hey man I've got a trainee I need him to sign off auto theft I'm just gonna sign him to you for the day and then you take him around all day and do your auto theft shit and then sign him off on it I go okay which is really great because when I always say if you want something done right go to the person who does that all the time okay most street cop people see cops as these experts in everything. We have general knowledge and everything, but until you work a specific crime, and only that crime, you don't learn all the deep secrets and curves and obstacles when you go to court and all that. But once you work that crime for a year or two, you learn what the defense is gonna say, what they've done before, you're working with the same DA who prosecutes those crimes. So you both become semi-experts on that crime. So that's the good thing about working specific crimes. So I worked auto theft for three years and uh, they would assign their guys. So they would give me these, what I would call rookies because they're going through FTO, which means they just got hired. Now it could be they came from another agency. And if that's the case, then I would just jump in a car. You know, I do a couple traffic stops on these high risk guys, make sure the guy had his hand on his gun, make sure he wasn't walking up there like he's walking up to a blue haired grandma or something. And, you know, and then I'd say, look, man, we're stopping bad guys. You're not in your city. We're going to the worst areas, the biggest ghetto areas. We're going to the high crime areas where people don't respect cops. They don't like cops. They don't want cops. They're going to fight cops. They're going to run for cops. They're going to try and hurt cops because they're doing bad things. So don't work like the normal cop on the beat in uniform to where you're like, how you doing, ma'am? I stopped you because you were going one mile over the speed limit. Can I see your registration, proof of insurance, and driver's license, please? I clocked you on radar at one mile an hour. And you know, you go, 
you get these young guys who are out there, okay, I'm not a traffic stop. And they'll do that, and I'll be like, dude, you got to relax. We're handling guys. That ain't going to happen that way. So after I signed him off and made sure he could get his, his gun out, and we stopped a couple bad guys. We asked him if we were on pro probation, got him out, searched him, cuffed him up, set him on the curb, searched the car. After we did a few of those and I felt comfortable, then we would just go out and I'd be like, pick a car, man. Let's see how good you are. Find me a bad guy. So we would go out profiling. Ooh, you can't say that. Well, I say it all the time and it's true. Like liberals do, they like to change the definition of words. So they don't like profiling because it's too close to stereotyping. It's too close to judging people. It's too close to being a racist bigot, homophobe, whatever. So they want to change all the words. So we would profile all the time. Our highest, whatever cars were stolen, those are the cars we looked at. And when we saw those cars being driven by gangbanger punts with tacks on their nets and teardrops on their eyes, then those were the people that we stopped. And we found a violation because it's easy to find a violation. If I want to do traffic stops, I can do it all. That's why these cops that go out and write tickets are the biggest freaking pansies I've ever seen. Because it's so damn easy. You can stop every car you pass. If you follow that car for two to three blocks, I guarantee you they'll commit one of the violations in a book this thick of traffic laws. So, so you know, and then people want to well, we have a Fourth Amendment of unlegal search and seizure, and you can't stop without probable cause or reason. And I, shut up, you big dummies. Look, in theory, that sounds great, but it just ain't so. Any cop can stop anybody at any time if they're driving because they're going to do a violation. They're going to weave in the lane. They're going to go too slow or too fast. They're going to stop too long or not stop short enough or keep roll through a stop sign or they'll have something hanging from their mirror or their sunglasses will be too wide because yes, there's a law in California that the sunglasses on the side of your head can only be so wide. And if it's wider than that, then I can stop you and give you a ticket. So there's always reasons to stop people. So we would go out there and do this. I would sign them off and do my few stops and get them. But more than likely, because we made a lot of arrests, I know people don't, cops that are walking in small towns don't believe this, but I mean, it was nothing for us to get four, five, six arrests a day. So, and these were felony arrests usually, not, not a bunch of misdemeanors, because misdemeanors tie you up too much. If you got a guy committing a felony and you're arresting misdemeanor guys and getting tied up with this, that doesn't look good for the team, it doesn't look good for your stats, you're letting worse guys go to catch less guys. So there's always, you know, it's kind of like if I can write a ticket all day or I can arrest somebody for a misdemeanor, I'd rather arrest somebody for a misdemeanor. It's a more serious crime. It deserves more involvement. They're out there victimizing people versus than some guy going a mile over the speed limit, you know, or he doesn't have a seatbelt on, or he's talking on his phone or some other BS. So most, we didn't arrest a lot of guys. So whenever I had somebody, I don't think I've ever had an FTO trainee come out on me and we didn't make at least two or three arrests. And that's a lot for a lot of cops in these smaller towns because they may go a week or two without making an arrest. You know, they only work eight hours a day, there's three shifts, they have their days off, vacation, sick leave, so the time they're out there with eight or ten other officers, the odds of them getting arrests in a small kind of relatively low crime area is low. But when they rode with me, we went to Sac Sacramento, the bad area of Sacramento, North Highland, all these places that are just, we call them target rich environments. When you go out there, it's not if you're going to get arrest, it's who you want to arrest and who you want to let go. So, <clears throat> but the problem was because I had a truck and those Rangers, it, it didn't have a back seat. It had this little bitty halfway kind of thing I could throw a shotgun and stuff behind, but it didn't really have storage room in the back. So I had two ways of transporting people. <laughs> and this always <laughs> freaked the people out, but you know what? It is what it is. I mean, if a lot of times there's a there's a saying in the cop world that you catch it you clean it cops don't like other cops going out there arresting somebody then calling somebody else to go take them to jail that's called BS that's called not taking care of your own shit that's called you're giving off the dumb work of arresting somebody and you're making this guy do your dumb work while you get to go out there and chase the bad guys and arrest them and find them so that's not just proper etiquette in police work you you have what's called beat integrity you watch your beat you're responsible for your beat you don't want other guys coming from other beats taking your calls because you're milking some one call and milking is just taking a really long time. You know, if somebody calls me and says, neighbor, use my water hose, I can handle that call in probably one minute or I can drag that out for an hour. 
I can go in and talk to the owner and sit down and do this community policing and how are you and what other problems have you had? Let me take some notes and have you talked to him? Have y'all have y'all tried maybe a mediator? You know what? Okay, great. After I spend a few time with her, I'm gonna go over to the neighbor and I'm gonna contact him and play the nice guy with him and spend another 30 minutes BSing with him. And then maybe I'll go back to each other and tell them what I think and the results are gonna be the same and then I'll leave. Well, meanwhile, while I'm there doing this community policing, nice handling people with click gloves, someone else is shagging my calls and my beat. Now there's lazy cops that are known for this. They are known and the sergeant has to stay on them. You need to clear your call. What, how long you got left? I'm gonna send somebody else to relieve you. Because what, what, what's common is, if you get what's called a bucket or a lot of paperwork calls on the streets, you're gonna end up having to work overtime, you're gonna get questions, your report's gonna get kicked back, you're gonna have more court time. So there's a lot of cops that are just lazy and incompetent and they don't wanna deal with a rape, a sexual assault, you know, a big DV where people are going to jail, you're gonna to have to do some paperwork, pictures, to collect evidence, they don't wanna deal with that. So as soon as they get dispatched to that call, they'll go out on a traffic stop. So the way that works is, and, and it doesn't take long to figure these guys out when you're working the streets. And uh, they'll just go, oh, I'm out on a traffic stop. So they know that call will be higher on a priority list and dispatch can't leave it hanging. So if I can stop somebody with no license, then I have to tow their car. That means I have to wait for a tow. That will tie me up another 30 minutes. I may arrest the person if she's driving out on a license, no one or he knows driving out on a license. So I can get tight and to find somebody without a license is like, I mean, shooting fish in a barrel. It's easy. I mean, 75% of the people in the areas I worked didn't have no damn license. You can stop anybody and no license and tow a car all day, but you wouldn't get anything else. You'd just tow a bunch of cars. So guys that knew this, man, they'd go out on a car. Oh, you know what? I think he's drunk. I got to do some FST. So now they're tied up for 30 minutes. They can't leave that call pending. Guess what? Some other dude in another beat has to come to your beat, take that call, do the paper, get tied up. Meanwhile, while he's taking your call, anything in his beat, he's responsible for, and now other people are gonna have to go to his beat to take his calls. So it's just, it's not considered appropriate. So I don't know if we're tired of watching the, the wood burn. Maybe I'd rather watch the horses <laughs> behind me. We'll watch the horses behind me. That way I can stand in the shade. So, uh, so that, those are just some of the issues to kind of give you a, a, on how cop work, you know, the ins and outs that people just don't talk about or you don't know unless you're a cop. Now, dispatch kind of knows this. Dispatch will also get involved in this petty crap. And if they have a big call and their boyfriend's working who's always bringing them lunch, they don't want to dispatch him to that call because if they do, he'll be tied up and he won't be able to bring them lunch. So guess what? They'll give it to some other beat and saying he's busy or they'll text or they'll send him a message hey do a traffic stop I got a rape pending unless you want it uh, get busy so I can give it to someone else and then that officer will be a uh, traffic stop uh, 1195 uh, yeah. so then he'll go out on his traffic stop then dispatch will be like uh, okay we got a uh, rape uh, at this thing he's tied up right now so and so can you take it and he dispatched somebody else so dispatch will do that too <coughs> hopefully you got a sergeant paying attention he knows the ins and out he knows what's going on and he knows the shift and the people that are working and who's who so uh, my fire looks like it's going out I gotta get some more wood to put on it so anyway back to auto theft when these guys when I arrest people I gotta transport my car I don't like calling marked units to come transport my my arrestees I catch it I clean it so I'm gonna I'm gonna transport it so if I'm by myself I handcuff him behind him back, I sit him in the passenger seat, I seatbelt him, I run the seatbelt through his arm so he has, has to move a little bit or I can see. And then I'm watching him as I'm driving. And a lot of people, you know, will see that, oh, that's unsafe, your gun's over here, you got a guy in the passenger seat, he can reach, hey, where I can protect my damn gun for somebody sitting in the car. But you got the safety sallies and police that are like, you need a cage and you should never transport without a cage and a person needs to be behind the seat. And like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, when unmarked units transport people, they transport them the best they can. So, when I had to transport somebody when I had an FTO, <laughs> there, there wasn't even really a center seat. There was kind of like, I think like a brake pedal or something. There was something that was hard, and I would just throw a cushion. I kept a cushion right there, and I'd sit in the middle. I'd put the arrestee in the middle of us, 
the cop on the outside and all three of us would be crammed in this little Ford Ranger <laughs> driving this dude to jail to book him into the jail. <laughs> and, then, and the guys right are like, damn man, that's crazy. I can't believe that. Well, every once in a while, if we had somebody that was fighting and that was aggressive and I didn't want to put him in between us, in the Air Force, when we used to transport in a truck, we would put, if this was a square truck, I would put my back in one corner of the truck and spread my feet like so. The suspect would be in the opposite corner and I would have my feet on his ankles, holding his ankles out with a gun, because we usually had long guns in the Air Force, we'd have long guns and short guns, or pistols. So, and they'd have them covered with a long gun while we're transporting them. So when we had to transport a guy that was likely to fight or something, and there were no units available if we had, you know, if, if it was a guy that was gonna fight, I would try to get another unit with a cage saying, hey, if you got a unit, but a lot of times people were busy. They were tired up. They were all tied up and they didn't have any free units. So, you know, you do what you gotta do. So, uh, sometimes I'd have the guy riding the back of the truck with, <laughs> and man, you talk about big, <laughs> big eyed cops, man. These are new cops that just out of the academy <laughs> and they're sitting next to a dude in a ranger that's handcuffed and all three of us are like this and we're going to jail in this little ranger truck. And they're like, what the hell? I would never do this. You know what? You do what you got to do. We get to jail. We get them out. You know, you learn how to protect your gun. You learn how to make your gun. I mean, I always, my gun always had a couple extra snaps out of high security holster. Or if I didn't, you know, I had my elbow on it. Or I, I kind of, you know, viewed the guy out. If I wanted to, I could make the cops sit in the middle of an uncomfortable spot and have the bad guy sit on the outside of him. And he could sit there and hold his gun the whole way so the guy couldn't take it. You know, I, I can't remember if I did that. I might have did that once if the guy wanted to. If the cop was like, man, I'd rather this guy on this side of me and me sit next to you. I'm, All right, whatever. I mean, I didn't care. So anyway, after we did a few of those and we saw, <laughs> we'd sign them off. I'd sign them off for auto theft. I'd show them where the vents are at, where the hidden vents, what it looks like when they switch a vent, how to pick out plates. You know, you see a plate with bugs on a rear plate. That's a clue. That means somebody switched a plate or they still, a lot of people will steal plates, but they'll steal the front plate because they, they know the person will walk to their car usually from the back and see the plate's gone so they usually steal the front plate and the person will think oh it just fell off or I hit something well when you put a front plate on the rear it's got bugs all over it rear plates shouldn't have bugs on it unless you're driving around 90 miles an hour in reverse a rear plate shouldn't have bugs so when you're driving around you learn I mean it was just natural for me even when I was off duty to see plates and uh, you know and then the numbers of the year because a year car will match the year of the plate cars that are made in the first part of, of 17 when they issue those plates those plates are going to start with a certain series of numbers it'll be whatever it is one two three abc so you learn after you work a lot and you get a few that this car this plate does not fit this car the plates either older than the car or the plates newer than the car so that means the person either switched the plate, lost the plate, got a new plate, bought the car, used it. There's a reason behind it. So that would be one indicator. Would I stop somebody because the plate didn't match? No. Would I stop somebody with bugs on their rear plate? Absolutely. Would I stop somebody that uh, has a rag wrapped around their steering wheel? Absolutely. Because when they bust out the steering wheel with a hammer or a crowbar to hotwire it or to kick the ignition out, they'll usually put a towel or rag around the column and we call that a clue because they don't want a cop pulling up next to him looking over and say wow what a dummy he didn't use his key punched out his column that guy's stupid let me go get a speeding ticket they would know that if cop looked over there and said shit that column's punched out that might be a clue I might want to stop that guy and figure out why he punched his own column or is that car stolen so you know again there's so many factors and things that you learn from doing that for a while and of course cops sit around we tell stories we have briefing every morning we talk about cases hey man I've never seen this before check out what this dummy did we'd be like holy shit you know or check out this guy I did it you know or the guy that stole the car in his garage we knew it was in a garage somebody ran him out and went to his garage it was gone but we saw an oil trail down the street around the corner you know almost a block to where they towed it or they put it on a carrier did something and it just leaked oil all the way to the other house we look through the window, see the car, end up getting a warrant and getting a, the stolen engine. But So anyway, uh, lots of clues if you're paying attention. Uh, I don't know what my horses are doing back there. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and end that there on a crazy cop store. I know it went on a tangent, but hopefully you pick some things up on uh, cop work. Buddy and Mr. T, you're good boys. Whatever, Dad. We're sleeping. 
keep burning the pasture and making your stupid videos. <laughs> All right, well, in that there.